Hey, today we're gonna to take a look at a new dual zone 12 volt fridge freezer combo from Bouge RV. This is their E35, which is a 35 liter or approximately 37 quart 12 volt refrigerator. And we're gonna find out, is it worth a look? Let's see. Let's take a closer look at some of the features here. First of all, it's got an integrated uh, bottle opener here on the side, and the handles are sort of hinged. You could you could pull these out if you wanted to, but they're pretty secure and they lay nice and flat. Since this particular model doesn't have any wheels or telescopic handles on it, it's going to be a little bit harder to move around if you have it fully loaded. Although empty, it only weighs about 36 pounds. Uh, but on the other hand, this is kind of what you want if you have something like a teardrop and you have a limited space in the galley, and I'll get into the dimensions here in a minute, uh, but this, this you know gives you more of the efficiency of space than something that's got the integrated wheels and the telescopic handle. So I kind of like that. Now this little panel right here on the side is a battery uh, compartment. Now the battery for this is going to be available from Bouge RV sometime in December for around 170 bucks, and this is going to allow you to power the refrigerator without an external power source and you can actually even charge it with a solar panel so up to 100 watts input here this will allow you to run an off battery while you're charging the battery if you're in a place where you can get sun but up to 100 watts input uh, if you don't have the battery in here and you hook up a panel yes i did try that um, you will power the control panel but it will it will not allow you to turn the compressor on because the voltage is just not stable enough uh, if you're just using a solar panel. So in order to use the solar panel port, you have to have the battery option or that really doesn't do you much. Good. All right, looking on the other side, pretty much just like the other side, but notice there's a little cutout here um, for the handle because this door is completely reversible, which is cool because if you orient this thing in such a way that you might want the control panel to be on the right instead of the left, uh, when you're opening the thing, you can just flip the top around. And that makes it super easy. So we'll get into uh, the control panel and the app in a minute. But let's take a look at the inside. All right? It actually has an integrated cutting board in here. And I love these dual purpose or multi-purpose things. You know, like the integrated bottle opener. And how often are you going to need a cutting board? Probably not all that often. But when you do need one, it's really nice to have one. And knowing that there's one kind of tucked away here on the inside of the, the lid is super handy. Now these are the compartments. Um, since I don't have it powered, you don't see the LED light. But there's an LED light for both compartments. One there. There's one over here. And I've just kind of partially loaded this up. So right now I have, let's see, what do I have? 14 cans in there. But if I were to, say, stack them, you can see that I can't quite get three cans high. I wouldn't be able to shut but I can stack two cans high and still have a little bit of room on top. And then over here on the freezer side, you can still see that it is tall enough for, for cans and maybe a little room on top, like a, I don't know, pack of bacon or something like that. But so it kind of gives you an idea of, at least from a soft drink cans form factor, what you could put in there. Let's try something else. So a gallon jug, right? So a gallon jug is not gonna fit in the freezer side you can see that this is more than deep enough to handle a gallon jug on the refrigerator side now i say refrigerator side but really you can configure this however you want this is typically considered the freezer side but you can make this the same as the refrigerator so they're both the same temperature you can make this the freezer side if you need more freezer space you could make the whole thing freezer temperature if you wanted to so it is completely dual zone completely configurable however you need to configure it let's try something else let's see about a bottle of wine so it does it is tall enough to hold a bottle of wine and be able to shut easily there's a nice satisfying clack when the uh, door is shut All right now i did mention that this door is completely reversible and so it's really simple to do when you open it up you just open it pretty much straight up and down and it comes right off you, know, you can tuck that in one side and slide this in the other. Now, if I want to put it on this side, I'll tuck it in on this end. Slide the notch there. And now the door is completely reversed. So I like having that flexibility in this particular refrigerator. 
because depending on how I've got my car packed, I might want it on one side or the other. So pretty handy. There's these little cup holder indentations. I mean, obviously this isn't gonna keep you from spilling something. It's just gonna keep it from flying off the, or sliding off the top if you're at camp and you just want some place to stick a can uh, so that it stays in place. But um, unlike the deeper cup holder design, this particular one isn't gonna do you much good if you bump the can. So I find these kinds of little cup holder indentations, meh, they're okay. A couple other bits of information before I get into some testing results here. Uh, I've actually had this thing for about a month, maybe a little over a month. Uh, Bouge RV does give this thing a two-year warranty, so be aware of that. That's pretty good. Uh, I mentioned it, it's a 12-volt fridge, but it's also compatible with 24 volts if that's the system that you happen to have. Now, the dimensions are always important to know, especially the outside dimensions. Uh, in this direction right here, it's 25 and a half inches uh, from outside of the handles to the outside of the handles. Uh, it is 17.4 inches high and it is 15 and 3 quarter inches deep in this direction here. Now, another thing that I like about this unit is it is very quiet. That was always something that's a big concern of mine because I'm a light sleeper, and especially if I'm using this in an enclosed space, like an RV uh, or a teardrop or something like that, where I don't want the compressor kicking on and off to wake me up. Now, when the compressor does kick on, it rates at about 57 decibels uh, at about three feet or one meter away. So I consider that pretty quiet. I think the more important thing for me is does it clank when it comes on and it does not. It actually has a nice little ramp up and it's super quiet. So if you're looking for a quiet 12 volt portable refrigerator, I would say this definitely fits that bill. Now, I was also very interested in understanding how well insulated this thing is. Honestly, I didn't have very high expectations uh, because it is a fairly lightweight refrigerator, but it, it actually did surprisingly well in my uh, insulation test. So basically what I did is I took eight cups or four different two cup containers uh, and I froze them solid before I started the test. And so I started at 22.1 degrees Fahrenheit, took the power, shut it down, and I just monitor it every hour. So I did it at one hour, two hour, and four hour increments. And after one hour, the temperature inside had only risen 5.4 degrees. And after two hours, it had only risen about 12 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after four hours, much to my surprise, the interior temperature had only risen a little over 19 degrees, maybe 19.6, I wanna say. So it was under 20 degrees uh, net temperature gain on the inside after four hours. That's actually very good performance compared to the other 12 volt refrigerators that I have tested. So uh, I think it gets a pass on the insulation test. I think it's also important to understand uh, what kind of power draw a refrigerator like this has especially when you're going to be running this thing off of a battery like a power station or a battery system on an RV and something like that um, you kind of want to know what to expect so if you run this with both zones configured at 40 degrees Fahrenheit so we'll call that fridge mode um, you can get about an average of 15 watt hours per hour of energy consumption off of your battery capacity so 15 watt hours per hour on average. So if you had a power station with 500 watt hours of usable capacity, that would give you 33 hours of, of runtime with this, or 66 hours on a 1000 watt hour usable capacity uh, power station in refrigerator mode. Now, if you run this in freezer mode, you set both sides to zero degrees, you can chop those numbers in half. Basically, I got 17 hours of runtime on a 500 watt hour, uh, capacity power station and 34 hours of runtime on a 1000 watt hour power station and the average uh, watt hour draw per hour was 29 watt hours per hour when you have this thing set at zero degrees on both zones now if you're running this in dual zone mode which a lot of people are going to do where the larger uh, chamber is 40 degrees and the smaller one is zero degrees so in dual zone mode i drew an average of 25 watt hours per hour which on a 500 watt hour power station would give me 20 hours of runtime and about 40 hours of runtime on a 1000 watt hour capacity power station. So hopefully that gives you an idea of, of how long you can run this thing given whatever your, your power battery capacity situation is. Let's go take a look at how you control this thing and what the app does, it's pretty cool. All right, let's take a quick look at the interface here. You can see the control panel here on the side of the uh, refrigerator has a USB charger, a type A USB connector. All right, so to turn it on, basically just press the power button 
it'll come up and show you the current temperature inside the uh, larger chamber, which is the kind of the refrigerator, and then the smaller chamber, which is the freezer. So this is the current actual temperature. If I want to look at the target temperature, I'm going to hit the down or the minus sign here. Now I'm adjusting the actual target temperature on the refrigerator side or the large side. All right? If I want to go to the freezer side, I hit the uh, little gear there, and now I can adjust the freezer side. You only have a sp split second to do that. So let me go ahead and get that to 40, go to the freezer side, and you can see I can take that down to like minus four. I'm just gonna leave it at zero. And this is, allows you to use, you know, configure both your dual zones. And then of course you can actually switch it. I don't know if you can make this out, but from max uh, to eco mode and back and forth using the sprocket here. You can also hold the sprocket down and you can get into setting the um, car battery protection, right? I've got it set on medium right now, uh, which uh, kind of, a, I, but I really never run this actually off of my car battery unless my car is running. So this is really only helpful if you're running this off your car battery and your car is shut off so that you don't actually run your car battery all the way out of power and then get stranded. So that's what that is designed for. Now, if you can't remember how the controls work, they do give you this nice little label on the side that kind of walks you through it. Very straightforward. There's actually an easier way to control the, uh, the, the refrigerator though, I have to say. There's actually a phone app here and it's called Car Fridge Freezer. And if I launch that, Smart Car Fridge, you can see I get kind of a control panel here and I can control the left and the right side. So right now I'm, I'm activated on the left side, which shows me that its current temperature is 46 degrees and that's what matches up here. And then its target temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I can switch to the right side, the smaller chamber. I can see my target is zero Fahrenheit and my current temperature is 26 degrees. That's because I've just started running this thing. And you can adjust the target temperature down here with the slider. There's a button here that I can actually uh, switch it between eco mode and max. So if I click it to shut off the eco mode, I'm now running in max mode. I can go back to eco mode. And you can check this while you're driving your car, actually. It's very convenient to be able to dial this down or up or change your battery protection levels, all that sort of stuff, switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. So this is one of those things where if, if you find this interface to be uh, problematic or clumsy or, you know, it's just awkward for you, use the app. All right, to go ahead and wrap up, I'm really impressed with this uh, refrigerator freezer. Now, as far as pricing goes, I don't remember off the top of my head what the list price is, but I can tell you that Bouge RV usually gives me a discount code if I review one of their products. So check the link below and see if there's a, a link and a discount code uh, for this particular refrigerator, because I expect that there probably will be, and that will definitely give you a better price if you go that route. So make sure you check that description below for that particular information. So that said, I, I'm very impressed with the usability of this refrigerator. I like the actually slightly smaller size. This is about 20% smaller than a something like a 48 quart. I have a 48 quart that has a telescopic handle on it and wheels, and it is a fair amount bigger. Um, so I like the, the, the ability to put this in places that something like a 48 quart or larger may not fit. So I like it for that. Um, I also like the fact that the LED lights on the inside go on and off automatically when you open the lid. Um, that's very cool, very handy at, in camp at night when you need to see inside if you don't happen to have a headlamp handy. And the fact that it's got a reversible top, an integrated cutting board, an integrated bottle opener, and the ability, and I'm actually really looking forward to this uh, when that battery comes available, because I know these little portable batteries do surprisingly well, at least in another refrigerator that I reviewed, the portable battery was a very useful option. So I, I'm gonna look for that battery as soon as it's available in December, because I think it'll be kind of an essential add-on for this refrigerator. So anyway, the bottom line is this appears to be a very solid, portable refrigerator, something I can wholeheartedly recommend. And I think if you're in the market for something in this size, the E35 fridge from Bouge RV is certainly something that should be on your short list. And because the price point is actually very good for all of the features that you get. So hopefully you found some of this information useful. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. I've got more power station, uh, solar panel, travel gadgets, all kinds of stuff. As you probably know by now, I review a variety of things. So there's a whole lot more on the radar coming. So stay tuned for that. I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.